If you hear two words, wind and turbine, I believe the first thing that comes in your mind is something like this. It's a horizontal axis wind turbine. This is widely used all around the world, but there is more. There is something called vertical axis wind turbine. Those turbines are way more interesting to look into because there are just so many different designs. We are going to build two different vertical axis wind turbines. Those two wind turbines that we are going to build doesn't just look a bit different, they work completely differently. This one works with the lift and the other is turned by the drag. To get this video started, we built a wind turbine that works with the lift first. And by the way, this video is sponsored by GDTech. The major part of this project is the blades. And one blade is 90cm long. And I got those in three pieces. Later I glue them together and make them beautiful. One part of the blade is 30cm long. And I have to print those nine times. It sounds pretty time consuming. And it is with a normal printer. But I'm not going to use normal printer. I am going to use GDTech Max 3. There is no better printer for this job than this one. First of all, this printer is huge. The blades actually fit on the wheel plate. And at the same time, it's fast like a bamboo lab. Printing one of those plates took me only 4 hours and the printing quality is absolutely excellent. This is insane, if I would print those plates with normal speed printer, it would take me 18 hours. The difference is huge. And also this is the best printer that I have ever tested for materials like ABS. And I'm going to print all of those plates with ABS because the wind turbine is going to be outside. So materials like PLA or BTG doesn't work, because of the sunny day they literally melt. So the ABS is kinda my only option over here, and also it's cheaper. Printing this type of huge part out of ABS is really difficult. There can go a lot of things wrong. Warping, layer separation, some weird shrinking when the material cools and then collide with the print head, and the list goes on. To avoid this type of oopsie doopsies, you have to print ABS with an enclosure, that this printer perfectly has. Actually it doesn't just have an enclosure, it also has chamber heating. I heated the chamber to 60 degrees and my ABS plates turned out absolutely amazing. Those are the best ABS prints I have ever printed. And I repeated the process more 8 times and the result was constantly perfect. If you are interested to have this type of printer that can print any material without a problem, I leave the link down below for you for more information. Now when we have all 3 blades in 9 pieces, it's time to make actual wind turbine blades out of them. First of all we have to understand in which order they go together. I made it as simple as I possibly can. Every blade has a number. 1, 2, 3. First one is number 1. On top of it goes number 2 and on 2 goes number 3. But also it's important that the numbers always face up, otherwise they won't fit together anyway. Those pieces will be glued together with two component epoxy glue. When I glue them together, they have to be perfectly aligned, or those plates are not going to work. To solve this problem, I designed two 4mm holes on the faces that will be glued together. In those holes, I will push something that is maximum 5cm long and has 4mm diameter. I can resin print some 5mm long sticks, I can use aluminium rod, and I also tried with an M4 bolt. I was thinking I'm literally a genius, but when I got the head off the bolt, it got so hot that the plastic around it literally started melting. I don't recommend this. The point of those is not to hold the parts together, but to align them and make the gluing process easier. So I mixed up some epoxy glue, installed those resin printed sticks to the holes and glued the pieces together. But I made a mistake, I used 5 minute epoxy glue. I highly recommend to use 30 second or 1 minute glue, because I literally had to hold them together for 5 minutes. It's important that you maintain the strong contact before the glue is dried. I repeated this with another part and rest of the plates I finished next day after I purchased some faster glue. All those plates are now ready and they look pretty good. I was actually planning to sand and paint them but honestly it's not really needed. But I did sand the spots where the glue pressed itself out between the parts. I didn't do this because to make them beautiful, I wanted to make sure that the aerodynamics didn't get affected and decrease the performance. You know maybe NASA watching the video, I wanna make them proud. Maybe one day I work there. <coughs> Ok it's done, it's smooth as shit, let's move on. Now I got 8.5mm aluminium rods to 35cm pieces. Originally I designed them to be 23.4cm, but I was thinking it's too short and I added some extra length to them. Now when I have 12 35cm aluminium rods I can assemble everything together. First I pushed them into those holes and made sure that they were exactly the same length after being assembled. It's really important, otherwise we can have some weird vibration when the wind turbine is spinning. Next, I use some self-drilling screws to make sure that those aluminium rods ain't gone nowhere. And I repeated all this to the rest of the blades. 
Meanwhile, I was using my G-Deck X-Max 3 to print those pieces. I also painted them to a metallic blue color to make the wind turbine a bit prettier. Because the wind turbine is so big, I moved from my table to my cat's room and did the rest of the assembly there. But instantly I ran into a big problem. Those extra 12 cm I added to those rods. Now this wind turbine is just doesn't go together. So I did a bit extra work for myself and I had to cut this little extra material off to finish the project. Now it goes together and after a bit time, here it is. It looks pretty nice and it seems to be balanced. But it's time to mount this outside and see will this literally spin. The first one is installed and it's not spinning. Well the main reason for this is obviously because there is no wind today. I have nothing else to do to just wait for one windy day. Of course you don't have to so I can show the clip right away how it was spinning. Meanwhile I was waiting in real life, I used my time to build a second wind turbine. This design is called Yugrinaki wind turbine. This one works with the drag. I found this design on Robert Murray Smith channel and this inspired me to design my own but bigger. I designed one piece to use almost maximum size of the Chili Deck X Max 3, which mean the wind turbine will be big. I designed the wind turbine to be stackable. It worked like this, the middle sections you can print as many times as you want and stack it up to the moon if you want. Well in this case it's not stable of course but you got the point. The X Max 3 is a fast printer but those pieces are so massive it took me still 15 hours to print. I'm using again ABS, wall thickness is 2 layers and the infill is 10%. One piece will take around 600 grams of filament. There's something we cannot ignore. One side of the board looks mega ugly. If you have ever printed ABS, you know what is going on. But if you haven't, this is one example why ABS is not the most loved material in 3D printing community. When the material is extruded through the nozzle, it heats up and expands. When it's laid down, it starts cooling and shrinks. Now the layers try to pull into themselves. Then the whole part experience lot of stress and things like layer separation start happening. In my case the remaining layers have bent upwards and they are higher than the nozzle. The first part I printed looks the worse. I was tweaking a bit with the print settings, lowering the printing temperature and using maximum chamber heating. I got the better results for sure. To assemble those three parts I just placed them on top of each other and used two M4 bolts to keep them attached. Using glue is also optional but I skipped this for now. Next I used some aluminium extrusions and 3D printed corners to build the frame. Like I don't know what I was thinking but I lost all sense of measurements. The frame is way too big, but anyway it's working and I mount this outside. After installing there was some mild wind and the wind turbine already spins. So I had way more hope on this one. Now again I waited for an opportunity to record the wind turbine spinning. Sadly those days was not as windy as I wished for, but still the second one performed. By the way, those clips you see are not recorded at the same time. They are recorded within a week. When I saw from the window that they are spinning, I ran outside with the camera and started recording. Also sometime I just sit and wait when some movement happened. Like I don't know what is going on but it's autumn and this season is usually really windy in Estonia. But this year, this is the best autumn ever. The air is just so still it's a bit unbelievable. Also one of the problems is the fact that turbines are too low to the ground. But I have no ability to place them anywhere higher. Still the project is not failure, because they work. Yes I expected a bit better result, but still they work. The first one, I really love how well this is designed and built, also how it looks, but the performance did disappoint me. I was hoping at least 50% better result. But on the other hand, the second one actually surprised me. 
It worked way better than I expected. Even though I put way less time and effort into this one. You may or may not think right now, where is the generator? Why I don't produce any electricity? Honestly, I had the plan to do so by using this NEMA 23 stepper motor as a generator and attach this to the wind turbines. But let's be real, seeing how unstably they rotate, this absolutely waste of time add any load to the turbines. They just won't get started and stay steady the whole time. My recommendation for you, if you plan to build DIY wind turbine or 3D print one, choose the design that works with the drag. The lift ones need a bit more knowledge about aerodynamics. For those two wind turbines, you can download the step files for free. So if you want to build those by yourself or redesign something, you are free to do so. Big thanks for watching this video if you are still here. Hope you enjoyed. Also, big thanks to GD Tech for sending me the XMAX 3 for making this video possible. Stay cool and we see you really soon in the next project video. Bye.